Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. We're going to look at a prediction that Bitcoin will reach a new all-time high. We're going to talk about $150 million being invested into the voice social media platform. Now, this is a unique social media platform in that it's built off of, Bit, uh, off of a, uh, a blockchain and it's going to use a cryptocurrency as a medium for exchange within the platform itself. And it's going to be built from the ground up as, it, as a decentralized uh, platform. So kind of interesting. We'll see where it goes. And then finally, we're going to talk about crypto user. Who are you? And so there's a recent research study that delves into who is investing in crypto. And so let's get started. This is going to be a great show. Cryptocurrency trading for beginners. This is ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It helps us a lot with uh, YouTube and the algorithms, it really does make a big difference. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So Pantera Capital CEO says that Bitcoin will come to its age in crisis and may top its all-time high. The San Francisco blockchain and cryptocurrency hedge fund founder made the comments in a March 25th newsletter to investors examining the fallout of the virus and the financial crisis. So this is from Dan Moorhead, who's the CEO of Pantera Capital. Now, he says, I have spent 35 years trading global disruptions. This is like no other. No kidding. I think we've all experienced that. This will certainly end the longest global expansion on record. It is likely to have a larger global economic impact than any downturn in recent memory. We now believe that the short-term high correlation with general markets is over and that crypto will trade independently. And so, you know, one of the things that happened with the crash, uh, the recent crash here in March of 2020, is that Bitcoin crashed just like the stock market crashed and a lot of people lost their hair. Um, their hair was on fire and they were screaming how Bitcoin is not a, uh, a, a, a place to store value, that it was not a good store of value. Um, and yet the funniest thing is, is that the best store of value that I know of is gold, silver, etc. And all of those crashed right along with the rest of the market. And so if that's the case, then gold is not a good store of value either, which is a ridiculous argument because gold is the quote unquote gold standard when it comes to stores of value. So... I never bought into that argument that Bitcoin has lost its value as a store of value just because it crashed along with everything else, because everything crashed, including the most historic store of value, gold. So kind of silly. Anyway, uh, it looks like Bitcoin, it, it, it's, it's, it was connected very closely to the stock market and the other assets as they crashed. It looks like that correlation is over and now crypto is trading very independently compared to the rest of the market. And I agree with that sentiment. And, you know, when I look at the charts, when I look at what's happening in the stock market versus what's happening in crypto versus what's happening in other places, I, I have to agree. They're trading at different rates. One goes up, the other goes down, one goes sideways and the other goes a different direction. So the price of Bitcoin may set a new record in the next 12 months. It's not going to happen overnight. My best guess is that it will take institutional investors two to three months to triage their current portfolio issues, another three to six months to research new opportunities like distressed debt, special situations, crypto, etc. Then as they begin making allocations, all those markets will really begin to rise. 
And so that makes a lot of sense to me as well, that it'll take a little bit of time. I'm not sure I'm so focused on institutional investors. Um, I know that they have had an impact on the crypto market, but I'm not sure that they've had a huge impact on the pricing of cryptos. It seems to me like the majority of the impact for cryptocurrency pricing has actually come from retail investors, as it always has in the past. It seems like, and, and I say it that way because, you know, it's hard to know the details of exactly what is affecting the price, what's making it go up, what's making it go down. But based on the information that I have and that I've learned, uh, it, the appearance is, is that the cryptocurrency market is still driven to a large degree by retail investors and not as much by institutions. The Pantera Capital founder did not predict a price. However, he has previously said that Bitcoin has the potential to reach $356,000 per Bitcoin within a couple of years. And so that's a very aggressive uh, futuristic price prediction for Bitcoin. Um, I would certainly love to see it hit that dollar amount and hopefully he'll be right and that'll happen in a few years. And then he concludes by saying, Bitcoin was born in financial crisis. It will come of age in this one. So kind of an interesting point. All right, so Block One pours $150 million into the voice social media platform. Now, Block One, the company behind the EOS blockchain platform, has been working on its social media space, Voice, for some time now. Currently in beta, the company has just put $150 million into Voice to improve its development. And so the Voice platform is a social media platform similar to Facebook, Reddit, um, and several of the others that are out there. Twitter, you know, you know of all those social media platforms. But the big difference is, is that this one is going to allow people to vote for different articles or videos. And as they vote for something, uh, that the receiver of those votes get a cryptocurrency coin and that cryptocurrency coin can be redeemed for cash. Um, as well as you can use that cryptocurrency uh, coin to vote for other, um, other uh, posts on the application. And so the posts help make a particular, or the votes make a particular, uh, you know, meme or video or music or whatever it is that you're voting on. It helps raise it up and give it uh, more popularity, uh, gives it more exposure because it's higher, closer to the top of the list on whatever list it happens to be on. Um, and so it's it looks like it's going to be a very interesting project. It's currently in beta. Um, I'm excited to see what they actually finally produce when it goes from beta into a live production environment. So this could be a very ex exciting social platform, but time will tell. And then finally, who are you? I'm not a very good singer, but I always think of that song by The Who um, that's used in some of the different crime shows as well as that uh, music program, The Mask. Uh, and so anyway, study reveals deep traits of average crypto user. They're male, they're millennial, and they're motivated. <clears throat> so let's get into it. He's a 35-year-old lawyer who lives in Milan who escapes the rigors of his profession by dining out at fine restaurants or cooking in at home. By day, he's an overachieving careerist. By night, he brushes up on all things crypto-related, studying Bitcoin, smart contracts, Ethereum, and the world of blockchain. Together, two G-E-T-H-E-R, because um, that's the, uh, an unusual spelling for the name of the company, allows users to spend their crypto like euros. Compiled data from over 10,000 users across 19 eurozone countries that reveals the average crypto user, an educated millennial male. According to the report, 77% of crypto users are men, 23% are women, with the majority of crypto spenders between 26 and 45 years old. They're overachievers, who are most commonly lawyers, accountants, and economists, followed by students. And so this breaks things down by 
uh, basically professions. You know, lawyers, accountants, economists account for 15%. They had students at 11%, operators, transporters at 9 senior executives and businesses at 8 and then on down the list of different uh, professions including cooks and waiters and teachers and other. Um, so kind of interesting, especially if you want to have a breakdown of, of who is using cryptocurrency and what do they spend their cryptocurrency on. Now, the vast majority of those that were spending their cryptocurrency were using it for restaurants and hotels and supermarket and grocery stores. That was where the vast majority of it went. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting was that Ethereum has a higher payment use than Bitcoin if you compare the volume of payments with the capitalization of both coins. And so here you can see that Bitcoin has about 70% of the market cap and Ethereum is about, I, I, I can't tell really because they didn't give us a percentage on that, but I, uh, it looks like Ethereum is about 15%. But you, when you look at the amount of dollars spent when people were actually spending cryptocurrency, Ethereum accounted for about 39% of that uh, spending, whereas Bitcoin was only about 51%. So interesting that people were much more free about spending Ethereum and were hoarding their Bitcoin. So that is our program for today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Do you have anything that you disagree I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comment section below. Uh, just scroll down in the YouTube comment section and tell us what's on your mind. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.